also for Nicola, but Nicola had some problems, so he's not going to be here today. Uh, so as I was saying, we have uh, three uh, super interesting projects. Uh, we have Andrea uh, Catabriga from Slow D. Uh, then we have Zoe Romano from uh, Openware. Actually, you see Arduino here, but it's she's uh, representing mainly Openware today. And uh, we have um, Jacopo Amistani from Open Source Ecology Italia. So I will leave the, them to introduce a little bit the, the projects so that you have more, uh, more detail about uh, what's all about. Hi, everyone. I am a member of Open Source Ecology Network. Uh, we are an internet-based community who are developing an amazing project. Can you hear it? Uh, sorry, just uh, asking again for the ones that are not interested and chatting on the backside to... Okay, thanks very much, guys. Open Source Ecology is developing uh, a kit of an industrial machine. Uh, it's called the Global Village Construction Set. And all the projects, schematics, and instructional video are published on a wiki page. So basically, anybody can download the project and replicate himself the machinery. They are modular, they are projected to not to be obsolescence, uh, obsolescent, but it can be repairable and it's a scalable technology. So if you need even to recycle the components, you can disassemble and repair and recover all the material you use. And uh, it's basically open. So everyone can modify and implement the project and share with the members of the community as open source community does. Hi, I'm Zoe, uh, I co-founder of openware.org. It's a project funded um, by with a grant from EU inside the lifelong learning uh, grants. Uh, we started this pilot project to see how uh, a network of small producers could benefit from uh, um, a repository of common resources and how networking around Europe could, could help them uh, become sustainable economically and, but, and in, in creating a relationship among them and also understanding how um, um, an experiment of uh, open source branding could also benefit uh, external communication but also inside communication and uh, feeling of belonging of a network. Good morning, I'm Andrea for the project Slow D. Uh, we are working on the project since 2011. Um, we became a company in March 2013, so we are very fresh to the business. Uh, we started with a very simple concept. Uh, we believe that all the objects are surrounding us in our places are uh, very simple, are made by very simple technologies and uh, we must avoid a mass production, a huge production made somewhere, maybe in China, I don't know, or other places so far from here, and stop to move objects, let projects move, let's idea travel. Uh, so we basically uh, are building a, um e commerce where our project, the project designed by professional designer, uh, could be bought online and then produce it uh, very close to you by one of our artisans in the network. We check quality because we select the artisan that can access to the network. And um, we open the product after it has been designed and distributed between the producers. Uh, people can buy the finalized product can buy raw parts and finish by themselves or download the do-it-yourself kit. Um, we are starting a pilot project with fashion, but it's, yes. Yeah, let's not go into details, I just wanted you to introduce you guys. Um, also, I, I want to make a small introduction on the, to the concept and, and, and explain you why we decided to have this, uh, this panel here at the Wishes Fest. So basically, uh, many of you, probably some of you, uh, have noticed that there is a, an ongoing discussion on 
uh, how manufacturing will uh, actually change to adapt to uh, a growing scarcity of resources. And there is somebody that is hypothesizing a future in which the exchanges will be mostly digital uh, and uh, like, like, I don't know, 99% digital and 1% physical. This doesn't mean that we are not going to produce anything anymore, but uh, this actually means that we need to produce things locally. And uh, um, since this is very uh, different from what, uh, what happened in, in the last 20 years, so 15 years with a huge globalization uh, going on with uh, stuff coming up, coming um, in from China and uh, to US and then maybe be, being sold all over the world again. So the questions that we need to answer are, are many. So there are branding questions, there are uh, local uh, sourcing uh, questions, there is uh, an infrastructure question. So uh, we just picked some interesting projects because some of them are, are uh, dealing with some aspects. So uh, my first question would be for, for, for to start from Andrea that's uh, uh, actually had uh, this experience of creating a network of workshops and, and craftsmen uh, all over Italy for now, but uh, they are planning to go uh, Europe-wide. So what's, what does it mean to, to build a network for, for production? Ah, we had a very curious experience because we, we, we are shifting to digital, but starting from a um, very physical process. Uh, me and my co-founder started uh, getting around, meeting, physically meet persons, the producers, the artisans. Uh, basically, we, we need to check the quality of their work. Uh, we didn't have a platform, we didn't have a website where, where uh, starting from this summer, peop, uh, the artisan uh, could participate and propose themselves, uh, uploading uh, pictures and certifying the portfolio of the, the experience, certify the expertise in this way. But we started getting around, so we were the the, the less sustainable aspect of the whole project to go with get and get in the car and uh, put a lot of kilometers around Italy, finding the producers. Then we started to link designers that uh, were proposing us a few projects. Uh, can say, okay, this is fantastic. Uh, um, maybe I start from uh, that producer in Vicenza. Oh, this is a good project. Uh, to make the hands on for by Giacomo in Milan. Uh, so we started to manually uh, match the uh, uh, designer's uh, project with the artisan's uh, expertise and uh, skills. So basically, started from a real world meeting people and the, the physical engagement uh, has been very, very important because um, now we have a a community of enthusiasts and to artisans that know who's behind a website. Okay. So, so you, you mentioned uh, quality, and um, I guess that uh, when you want to, you know, to promote uh, some kind of uh, new vision and uh, new uh, consideration about uh, the resources and and uh, uh, skills and uh, quality of work uh, works. Um, this actually relates a little bit with also with branding because uh, it's it's like uh, the quality is granted by you know the brand that uh, yeah. makes this effort of organization and and so um, Zoe, uh, I, you know Openware is actually a collective brand so um, why don't you just give us some insights about what does it mean to to build one. Yes, um, from the beginning we knew that we couldn't have the, the forces and the resources to check uh, all the members of the community to see uh, who were producing uh, good garments or not. Uh, actually, um, just to give a bit of background, at the beginning you, you could participate uh, as a member of the community or opening up your profile and showing off your production, your own production or downloading the codes of the collaborative collections that were published on the website and that they were created once a year uh, in a collaborative uh, um, seminar 
inviting uh, um, some of the members of the community that working together for some days and creating a collaborative collection. And because of this garment were put online and, uh, and the, each member of the network could download the codes, create locally the physical products uh, and sell it directly using the, um, the brand of the community next to their own brand. So if um, a person had already their own brand, if a designer had their own brand, they could uh, give the personality to the garment and then promote it as one of the um, item of the collection plus their own personality of their brand. But on the other side, also people that didn't have, um, were not designers uh, and didn't have a brand, people that could were able to sue uh, and to uh, manufacture the, the item could download and um, sell it uh, without adding any other information. So the idea was how do you, how can you control or how can you deal with the quality of the garments if a person uses the brand openware and then produces uh, items that are not good quality, how can you check if this is something that uh, it's nice or it ruins the, um, the, the brand and it loses uh, reputation online. So the idea was to create um, like a rating system that um, every member of the community, when you subscribe, had to uh, declare their own values. That means, for example, tr transparency, openness, quality, or whatever. They had to um, mm, describe in which way they were making it uh, real, these um, values, not only in theory, but how do you output these values. And so in the person, when there is a relationship going on, if I go and buy an item from a local producer, then I rate them basing my rating on what they are declaring online. And so the, uh, this feedback was uh, uh, transparent on their profile. So the people like on eBay or on other 2.0 plat platform could see what was, or Airbnb, could see what was the rating, what was the relationship with uh, customers, possible customers, or other collab collaborators, because all the relations could be uh, can become transparent. Because also, if I start to produce a garment, maybe I start a collaboration with another local producer for, for example, adding some technology on the garment, and I also rate the collaboration um, between. So, so it's actually a brand that is built on transparency, full transparency, and you know accessibility to information. And actually, one of our um, desires that actually didn't come up because we didn't have the resources was to have um, to create to have the actually openware brand changing over time according to the values that were expressed by each member of the community. Mm -hmm. And can I just uh, ask you a little bit more specific question on the local production staff? And um, I guess that once you have this kind of brand, uh, it's like, a, you know, many of you are used probably to global brands that have franchising all over the... the I'm sorry for this annoying noise. Maybe if somebody can check what's going on, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're moving. <laughs> yeah, I'm sailing. I okay. feel sick a bit. <laughs> so, so actually, um, what's the uh, what's the difference and what's the new opportunity in having a DIY sort of DIY franchising network? So I guess that I cannot open a uh, I don't know a Zara shop without uh, relating with the with the centralized and fashion brand and but maybe I can do that with openware I can open a shop in my you know in my uh, town and so I'm wondering what's the opportunity in this is there any real opportunity in, in uh, empowering new craftsmen to you know, to do that on their own yes for sure the the thing we um, we liked about this project is that uh, um, the, um, the opportunity that people could become part of a network 
without being uh, um, a designer, in the sense that usually these type of communities are focused on the people that are creative mm -hmm. and are able to have a great idea and a great uh, design of a garment. Here, we, we thought of sharing uh, um, immaterial resources of code that were high quality and easy to um, manufacture, so we could have people that were, had nice skills but usually are not on the focus of uh, this type of um, two uh, web 2.0 communities and be able to be part of a network. So not only having uh, design skills, but also manufacturing skills, also because we were targeting not only um, uh, people from uh, Europe, but we were thinking of uh, also involving people living uh, outside of Europe, maybe in Asia or... Mm -hmm. In, uh, and this, this brings up some interesting uh, reflections that I was having with Sha Jacopo like a few hours ago. Um, when you have this kind of uh, globalization of brand, so uh, Jacopo is, as you know, is working with open source ecology that is a pretty global, has a pretty global vision, or maybe more than global, actually universal vision. And so uh, the idea is that how do you translate these uh, global discourse and these global visions into real local needs in terms of products and opportunities, market opportunities. So I, I know that you have a pretty good story on how you dec decline at this in, in, in Italy. Okay, uh, l let's start from the beginning. So yeah. actually, we have the project of Open Source Ecology that is quite known because of the is an innovative proposal of sharing design and schematics mm -hmm. of not just uh, uh, small board like Arduino or other small well-known open hardware devices, but uh, an entire machine, in this case an entire kit of 50 industrial machines, so we are tractors and things of that size, so mm -hmm. not really small toys. And move with this approach from a country like US, we have a movement like a Garage uh, Workshop and DIYer who actually is a movement that it have almost 20 years of life. And we moved to Europe. And we're in Europe, we have legislations and laws that actually stop us from doing certain kind of uh, machineries or uh, activities on our own because we are private citizens, we are not enterprises. Uh, and we have to certificate certain kind of tools, uh, for example, our tractors. Uh, we have an example, uh, or a CB press that is a machine that can make compressed earth brick. Uh, we, we have some quite a problem, so we have to uh, understand the environment when we are placing our uh, idea, our products, not just because of selling it, even just for using it in a safe way, without uh, the support of the institution, and without the state that mm, fight you back because you're doing something that is wrong from his point of view. So the solution we found in, in this case for what is Europe and more specifically in Italy is to uh, open a reality, start up a, a small cooperative business to develop the solution in the design and the project to uh, let the machineries and the kits uh, itself being uh, supported and certificated even tutelated from below. Mm -hmm. the, the the main issues uh, at the beginning was to uh, where we start uh, and learning and talking with people, engineers and certificators and uh, other entrepreneurs who actually work in manufacturing of tools they said you have to start from the finish so you have to fix the idea of the product you want to do and study around the product, the uh, design and the final services it will have to, to do. And then you have to fall back every step uh, until the phase of production. Then you start producing when you have fixed the, the point. So is, is there any meaning in a, such a global effort or... Is really there is a point in which we cannot be so global. We cannot uh, really relate with problems at a global level. We, we need to, you know, approach production of and solution in manufacturing or in fashion or in design at a local level. 
Well, every to be really effective, you know. Yeah, every 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 country, every places in world, maybe in Asia, Africa, South America, in this case Europe, we have a different uh, cultural context. So actually, the solution, the most focused one, uh, have to be contextualized on the places when you are proposing uh, this project. Open source ecology uh, have a great have a great idea, but uh, different places and different countries have different <coughs> needs. So, for example, in Italy. Uh, we have a, a lot of a hard time proposing open source ecology as it is. So we, so I mean, because of cultural differences. Uh, because of cultural differences, differences principally, and we have to uh, propose uh, other ways to have to use other ways, other uh, products to support the movement and to share this idea of doing stuff in, in an open source way with open hardware technology. Uh, to get people interested, get institution interested in what we propose. This way we can certification. A certification principally. You can sell or use a product that is not certificated. But isn't that a European level? It is a European level. <laughs> the matter is that if you certificate in if you certificate it in Italy, the certification is valuable in all over Europe. We have a common law a European level that is for certification. So actually, you have to solve a problem in one place <laughs> to let the whole community of Europe to uh, gain from this known problem. That because, in, from my point of view, is not a problem; it's just a point to start again at the development of the project in our context, a cultural context. Okay. So, uh, if you want to add something. Because I want, I would like also to give you all the um, the words for for questions. So let's think about questions. We have plenty of time for that. Andrea, want you want to? We we decided to decline projects on the the the, the country where it would be produced. Uh, uh, we can go on having products that are equal everywhere, have made with the same materials everywhere. You can find certain wood that you find only in South America here in Europe. Uh, so the product we uh, made to be produced because we are not a brand. We say we unbrand products because the brand is made every time by the designers and the local producer. Each time changes the, the who is branding the product. And and for Farnito, we don't have a lot of stuff with the certification, despite only uh, the niche of uh, kids Farnito. They are very strictly regulated. Otherwise, we don't have enough problems. But we decided to change the products and the material, the raw materials you can ch choose between when you buy the product. Okay, can I just uh, add some, some meat on that? Uh, do, do you think that we, we should really have global designs and then maybe, I don't know, I, uh, designs that are uh, suitable to be uh, produced locally with different brands of certain materials, so like a design that is invariant to the mat real materials that you use to, to make it, because maybe in Italy you have some materials, in Africa you have different ones, or it's just that we need the really uh, uh, local uh, designs coming up, and maybe just create the platforms for that to, to come up. Yeah, uh, we think the ideas are global, but production is local based mm -hmm. locally based so uh, you have to decline your idea when you produce somewhere else despite the place where you start and you design it we, we actually uh, uh, having products that design it in design somewhere not made in uh, so design it in Italy yeah, so design it in France but yeah. made in Algeria made in uh, so these South two Africa. phases are both going to be uh, decentralized. Also, the design stuff is Absolutely. going to happen at a cultural level that is much more. We found that you know, local. A lot of people are loving loving the fact that we uh, design something. A designer with his artisans in Rome is thinking about a stool, a table, an object, and that that object will be realized in California. Um, so, as designer and thought somewhere. Realize it somewhere else, and this is the magic. Because uh, um, this is very important for spreading knowledge about making. Um, we have in Italy a uh, few very expertised uh, artisans working on uh, particular materials, 
and this that knowledge is very local basic mm-hmm. uh, we move the next the expertise on what and uh, about the way you can do something you want to i want to address uh, a problem as we were talking about problems in manufacturing locally in in the project of openware we realized soon that it would be very important to invest and promote the use of local infrastructures local hubs in the cities for the production of these garments for example just imagine a maker space of a, or a fab lab with machines and tools uh, focused on fashion production but the problem that we faced is that if you open up a maker space and you say yes come come here uh, in your free time and do an experiment and produce for the law it's fine but if you have professionals coming and producing in the maker space that's a total different thing and uh, uh, you need a, a, a different uh, insurance a different uh, mm-hmm. um, type of uh, bureaucrat um, framework to have professional coming and producing a small production of garments in your maker space so uh, so you i guess this is an issue of the diff- diffusion this fact- factory so how do we create this factory well, yeah is- but it's not a factory actually it's a mm, like a tech shop or a maker space where professionals come and and create their own products a small batch of products but actually right now they have to figure out as they are doing it in their free time otherwise we couldn't do it is there any question already i would like to all of you if you could answer quickly how you address environmental sustainability in the uh, local manufacturing issue well in local manufacturing you have to think this just the transport It's a definitely good benefit for the environment. Uh, if you think stuff that are made in China and then transport to Europe, they have to travel uh, uh, for more than a half of the world by sea, and they consume oil. In other words, also if we pro- produce locally, uh, reduce uh, co- pollution, air pollution, environmental pollution, but also we use local materials, so we do not have to. Uh, wave on the environment of other countries for example so we are using local materials and local works and we do not uh, use uh, petrol to transport stuff or even we can u- uh, maybe use a recycled local material so we can even do not use a new raw material uh, extract from local resources but recycling stuff that maybe coming have. from all over the world as well so yeah the point, sure. i guess that this is a key point to use local materials to to to, uh, to you know to, for this kind of stuff mm-hmm. requalification of the materials requalification of the workers requalification mm-hmm. of uh, the production and the way of production mm, designing product not for to be obsolescent uh, but also to use maybe recycled material or recyclable material that has to reduce in the long term but not even the long term and even the medium term the cost of the production and the quality uh, of the product because if we think even before making product so this is why i was talking about start from the finished product and the way back uh, we do not have to uh, think to you just throw everything in the garbage but to recover all the materials as much as possible because it's uh, just not for the environment but just even for the cost of sustainability of the economy of your small enterprise or your fab lab or tech shop or even for the quality of the product you want to do yeah, do you yeah. Want to something there? Yeah, we we are we are structured a kind of policy. Um, you can do that table without respecting uh, the kind of food we want you to use. Um, helping artisans uh, to have a convenience in doing this, we are contracting for discounts to a regional provider of rock materials. Because uh, you can go to the provider and say, okay, I had read an address book of thousands of artisans and local producers. Uh, what surprise you can do for them? So we help them saving in, um, in providing only materials, only sustainable materials. You can't only say, okay, you must do that. 
okay, it, 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 it works, but not not always. Do you have to encourage them also to because you are sustainable? You are actually on, on a market, so there are competitors not doing that. So yeah, that's a good point. I, I guess the, the point of making sustainable materials more accessible in terms of prices. Huh? So our our point. job is mostly on um, creating that dynamic uh, product chains everywhere, uh, pop up product chains. Because uh, think only when you uh, have a product made by two or more mater different materials, you have to put together and make work together. Uh, uh, the artisan that works on wood, the other one that works on steel, uh, respect uh, uh, shipping times. But we don't have shipping. We don't have logistics. We want. We will have some only local and social logistics. Uh, we will use uh, carpoolings uh, for uh, yeah, that's having a good social uh, <laughs> you actors. To oh, I just wanted to, I mean, I'm agreeing with the, the same guys. approach, uh, but I just wanted to add that the, um, we didn't put uh, um, like uh, a fixed uh, approach on sustainability in the platform because we think that right now for small producers is really like you cannot become sustainable starting from today or say tomorrow, but just start the discourse and saying that becoming sustainable is a process. First, you start becoming uh, economically sustainable in finding local uh, collaborators and uh, local chain. And then we'll start uh, also thinking about becoming sustainable from the ecological point of view. But uh, just not to be to have too many responsibilities at, from the beginning. Okay. Any other? Yeah, that's I guess the job uh, local. Mm, yeah. Lo uh, yeah. Go on. Oh, thanks. Uh, I guess sorry, the job. I, I will, I will this, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was saying you're talking about transport, and when you're doing locally, you don't have transport, but when you're mass producing, you also have the scale effect and you're more efficient. Uh, is it, does it compensate or is it positive? Have you made any calculus or do you know if any researchers made an estimation of the benefits of making local products? The question is: Is really low, uh, global and mass production more efficient in terms of? Yeah, uh, you have a good point. Yes, there is a, always a, a gain from not having a mass production because all the mass production in China is not efficient as we have mass production in the U.S. or in Europe because they have different criteria on making uh, product. They pollute a lot. They use coil. They have a different way of even recovering uh, resources. Uh, when we have a, a factory or mass product, uh, something maybe a car. I know I have my our Fiat uh, industries in Italy. We have a, yes a more more efficient way of production, but all the energy they use for producing uh, a product in this way is less efficient than doing uh, in a in a specific uh, small scale distributing the effort on all the territory where there is a bigger share of the income you have if you distribute the work on all the territory and uh, by the way you have even a better quality of the work i don't know if you ever spend the time you, uh, mentioned, uh, <laughs> you mentioned some numbers if you want to share but if you know yeah, numbers there are a few studies about uh, uh, the fact that if you start from a product that has a life uh, um a uh, designed life uh, of 2 3 years Despite uh, starting from the point that you could have product designed for uh, lasting 20 years, uh, how many products you have to buy during that 20 years and how many times you have to move that design in 20 years? 10 times, 8 times. So this is the Yeah, yeah scale. I, I guess this, this question was... At well, you can reduce uh, a lot of the, the quantity of uh, transportation the, and the vectors running to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I guess his question was much more about also prices. So uh, efficient in terms of costs and you mean uh, probably uh, competing on prices with mass protection. Is, is it right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a question over there. I'm sorry. 
good morning, Vincent. I'm working on a project on make Makerspace in Marseille. And uh, well, I was wondering who the product you are producing are made for. Uh, is, it, is there any uh, economical, uh, lo logical uh, thing? Because, uh, well, when you make study about who is uh, ready to buy something, but the first thing is price sensitive. And the local thing is not uh, the third thing that motivates people. And uh, usually, but me, I, maybe I'm wrong, uh, it's, uh, for instance, in France, it's very expensive to produce in France. And uh, so how do you manage this? How do you fix it? Uh, can you help us? <laughs> We moved. Uh, we don't have m marketing expenses like uh, normal so brand has. We don't have uh, a distribution cost. We don't have dealers. Uh, if you start, take an example. Okay, mm, if this product costs uh, ten, the production, uh, we add the designers' royalties. We add the, um, the producers' royalties because when uh, the pr the designers. Uh, um, need to prototype the idea we find that the, the artisan that we prototype for free uh, then we give a two percent royalty to the artisan that invested adopted the design uh, then we have a, a little charge on we uh, we charge at maximum of 19 uh, percent over the product so if it costs 10 at the production our product gets out at uh, 15. Um, if uh, a normal known brand produced for 10 or and no three it produces for three uh, but the pen will be sold at 50 so we can save a lot we are in a no man's land between IKEA and the brands mm -hmm. uh, talking about prices can I can I just and uh, then there is a question for Joseph but uh, can I add uh, isn't uh, Maybe so you are, because you are very you know familiar with social interactions and uh, isn't uh, coming up a um, global discourse with people, including companies, that will actually end up in uh, uh, making more lights on the uh, negative externalities that now are not included in the market price of stuff, and so maybe we can expect for the future that people will make choices not only because of the you know the final price or, or maybe even that the final price will include uh, some some kind of compensation from from negative externalities so so that industrial mass production will actually end up in costing a little bit more and maybe a local production a little bit less no actually right now there are very little uh, um, let's say um, approaches for global fashion brand into in, in englobating in the price, the negative externalities, and um, actually the the H and M is doing uh, a huge effort into communicating their plan for the next twenty years into um, becoming more sustainable. Uh, they have uh, like forty pages report uh, on their website, and and they're working a lot into. Actually, I talked about this uh, with uh, some friends that are into sustainability, and actually, it looks like they are putting a lot of resources into doing this. We, we will see what happens. But other brands more that usually should be more um, uh, aware and uh, could benef be benefit by this approach are not doing any type of action. Last year, there was a meeting uh, in Milan with some... Uh, Italian brands, but they are just they just wrote a chart of uh, suggested uh, behaviors. So we are uh, at the stage of talking. Yes, uh, still uh, at the stereo stage of talking. But uh, regarding, uh, I want just wanted to yeah, add yeah. something regarding the the prices. Actually, in our approach, when we do collaborative collection that with the codes online, we suggest. Uh, how many hours it should take to create the garment. And when we give the brief to the designers who participate to the collection, we told them to have a look and uh, keep in mind to do simple things uh, and not too uh, complicated uh, with too many details. 
then it's yeah. the it's the local then it's the local producers that, that can decide if to make it in silk or in cotton depending on what it's their target maybe they can reach uh, uh, cheap silk because the, they are in a region of the world where silk is not expensive or they can add uh, some other features according to their uh, um, local situation. So it depends, first of all, on, on the target, on the people, on your clients, on your environment. And, and so it's mainly up to the local producer to decide which is the price that they can think they can sell the garment. We give a suggestion, uh, but we. But then you can rate also when you buy something. You can rate and say, look, I think it's too expensive for what it is. Or I mean, there there could be this type of feedback. Uh, that's it. Uh, I was just wanting to jump back to this guy's point about global versus local and economies of scale and things. I think. For me, it's about the ba it's about balance, really. Like, I don't see anyone manufacturing screws locally anytime soon, because it would just be completely insane. Um, and you know, things that you make gazillions of like that. And also, often transportation in terms of energy costs is often a minuscule part of the overall picture. So, for example, there's a huge heated greenhouse in London where they grow tomatoes all year round. But it's actually less, it takes less energy to drive them from Spain than it does to heat the greenhouse. So, you know, yes, local and organic and homemade and all ecological first. Um, and then the other overall point with ecological stuff is just buy less stuff generally. Like, that should be the first rule. Like, I don't care if it's local. If you don't need it, don't buy it. Um, so, you know, we need more awareness about that as well. As to do like with re recycling, people forget recycling is the third R, you know, reduce, reuse, then recycle. Whereas we've got all sorts of rules in Europe which are, yeah, let's promote recycling, let's promote recycling. And we don't have enough about, you know, the four letter word, less. I think that needs to come back into our vocabulary a bit. Can I just uh, build a little bit on, on top of Joseph consideration and, and maybe uh, you, are, you guys are trying to do uh, an experiment and see if some of the products that we actually are used to you know, consume are really not sustainable by definition. So we can, if we cannot produce it locally, maybe we should get rid of them. It, it, that's, the, that's the point. Isn't Is that something, you know? I completely agree, actually. I don't know, maybe we have, uh, we have some uh, space for, for our very last question. Is there anybody? Okay. Do we have no questions? So maybe we can just um, have a closing. I, want to, I just wanted to add something regarding uh, the um, mass production. Uh, when we thought about this local production of garments, then we said, what happens if the demand of a particular item of the collection rises and pro local producer uh, feedback us saying, look, uh, we have too, m too many demand uh, for this type of garments. So that would be the paradise. I mean, in the sense that when you have uh, high demand, it means that you don't have enough product. So we thought in this paradise uh, situation to get in touch with some uh, um, factories around the world that were uh, with uh, good condition of workers, uh, uh, good condition of uh, impact on the territory and uh, have uh, them uh, and ask them how it would be to produce this uh, single item for us and have uh, distributing this uh, item around Europe to the local producer that wanted to sell. So just in case the demand rises uh, too much, we would start the plan three of, of the project and start to have some... Uh, uh, factories collaborating with us okay so so thanks everybody for coming here it was uh, nice to see to so much interest for that kind of forward thinking you know uh, stuff so thanks again uh, have a good lunch and catch up in, uh, in the afternoon <laughs>